Hello, welcome back to Sweet MTG, and welcome to Instant Deck Techs. In this series, we go over everything you need to build a certain commander. We'll go over the strategies and the types of cards needed you need to get the deck working. Any cards we mention will be down in the description below. In this video, we're going to be looking at Borborygmus Enraged. It is 4 red red green green for a 7 6 legendary creature Cyclops with Trample. It also has, whenever Borborygmus Enraged deals combat damage to a player, reveal the top 3 cards of your library. Put all land cards revealed this way into your hand and the rest into your graveyard. It also has, discard a land card, Borborygmus Enraged deals 3 damage to any target. Bobby is one of my favourite commanders of all time. That ability to turn any lands in our hand into 3 damage to any target at instant speed is a ton of fun, and it means you can really mess with your opponents. We're going to be weaponising that damage as much as possible. We'll be running cards that get lands into our hand, cards that increase the damage, and cards that draw us cards when we do deal that damage. We're basically trying to turn Bobarygmus into a machine gun that can take out all of our opponents. With that in mind, when putting this deck together, you're going to want to run at least 40 lands, so we have plenty to play and plenty to throw. That ability is also a discard ability, so we'll run some discard matters cards to get even more value out of it. The first thing we need to talk about is our ramp. Bobby costs a whopping 8 mana to cast, and then once we've got it out, we'll still need to get lands into our hand. With that in mind, this will end up being a hefty ramp section. First up is Cultivate and Kadama's Reach. These are perfect for the deck, as they get a land from our deck and put it into play, and then another one into our hand. Early game, we can just play it, but in the late game, it gives us an extra land to hock around. After that, we have ramp effects that just get land and put them straight into play. These are still awesome in this deck, as we still need to get to that 8 mana number in order to cast Borborygmus. Then we have some cards that go into our deck, and get lands and just put them into our hand. In most decks, these are normally far worse, as you do want them on the battlefield, but in this deck, they still help us hit our land drops early, and can tutor up some ammunition for Bobby when we need to throw some lands around. And to help make those cards better, we can also run some spells that let us play multiple lands per turn. These obviously work really nicely with those previous cards, as we're going to be spending most of the game getting additional lands into our hand. These can help with the early game ramp, so we can get Bobby out as quickly as possible. When it is about and hurling the lands around, they'll end up in our graveyard. We can also run some effects that let us bring them back either to our hand or to play, so that in the future we can use them as either damage or ramp. Next up are some discard matters cards, which will help synergize when we discard lands with Bobby's 3 damage ability. This is definitely something that's come on leaps and bounds in the past few years. First up is Bag of Holding. This is a great card that lets us store all the cards that we discard with it out. Then we can pay 4 and tap it to return them all to our hand. This basically lets you double all the lands that you've discarded over the course of a game, so that on a key turn when you want to take out the table, this gives you the reach to do it. Then we have Currency Converter and Surly Badgersaw, which can take those lands we discard and turn them into treasure, giving us yet more ramp to get our huge commander out and ready to go. Next up are some cards that add to the damage that we do when we discard, with Glinthorn Buccaneer and Pralin Skyshark Rider. These deal 1 damage to each opponent whenever we throw a Lightning Bolt land at something. In a 4 player game, these effectively double the damage that Bobarygmus does, as it'll split 3 damage out to each of your opponents. There is also some combo potential with these as well, as if you put Keen Sense on one of them, and if you have 8 or more cards in your hand, at the end of turn, you basically win the game. How it works is that at the end of turn you discard down to a hand size of 7. That discard causes the creature to deal damage to each opponent. This makes Keen Sense trigger, and you draw a card. You then have more than 7 cards in hand, so you have to discard down again, and the whole thing repeats itself. Then lastly, we have Change of Fortune, which makes us discard our hand, and then we draw cards equal to the number of cards that we've discarded this turn. With this deck, we'll be aiming to discard so many lands that this could easily draw us 7 or more cards in a turn. Talking of card draw, let's go over the dedicated ways that we're going to get some more card advantage. First up is Keen Sense and Snake Umbra. We've gone over how these can combo with some of the discard cards, but sticking one of these onto Bobby will still be really strong. It's a 7 6 with Trample anyway, so we'll be getting through that way, but importantly, these don't say combat damage, so we'll trigger when we throw a land as well. Then in any big green mana deck, Harmonize is still a great and consistent way of spending 4 mana to draw 3 cards. Then for some card draw with a higher upside, we have cards that draw us cards equal to a creature's power. This will mean that generally speaking, these will be drawing us 7 cards, which is very nice. Next up we have what is technically card selection over card advantage, and that's Abundance, which lets us choose if we draw a land or a non-land permanent every time we draw a card. This can be really strong with some of the large draw effects, as it means we can guarantee drawing a load of lands if we need them, to start throwing around. Or it means earlier in the game, while we're trying to set up, we can always hit gas. Then we have Horn of Greed, which lets anyone draw a card whenever they play a land. This is fantastic in a lands heavy deck like this, and all the better if we're running the cards that let us play extra lands per turn. Then finally we have two large dragons that can draw us some cards. 
Dragon Mage can repeatedly help us refill our hand with some lands, and then Null Spine Dragon can come down after we've swung and thrown some lands around, and can refill our hand so we can do it all over again. Moving over to our interaction, we have a number of cool things that we can look at. First up, we can give Borborygmus Death Touch, so that by discarding a land, we'll be able to kill any creature that we want. The lifelink on Basilisk Collar is really nice as well, as it can help stabilise our life total. Then we move on to some solid options in Gruul. I'm a big fan of Pest Infestation in a deck like this, as we can pump in some extra mana to make us a board state. Kenrith's Transformation is just a great way of nerfing an opponent's commander, and then Beast Within and Chaos Warp can just answer anything, so we're great to have access to. For some board wipes, we have cards like Savage Twister, which again we can put a load of mana into. Then you have Chandra's Ignition, which is awesome in a deck with a huge commander, as it'll wipe the board while dealing our opponent some damage as well. Then you have Blasphemous Act, which is just a great budget include in any deck running red. The main downside of having a beefy commander is that it costs a ton of mana to get out, so we are going to want to run some protection to help keep Bobby around. First up we have some instants that can either protect just our commander, or can protect our whole board. What's nice about these is that it's just really hard for our opponents to plan around these. Definitely consider running more of them if you're in a more interactive or more competitive playgroup. After that you have the always solid Lightning Greaves and Swiftfoot Boots, which can protect our commander turn after turn, and the added haste will be really nice as well. Moving over to our win cons, we're primarily going to be looking at ways of boosting up that discard damage ability. First up we have some damage doublers, and what's nice is that these can all stack, so get one or more of these out and your lands will start dealing 6, 12 or even more damage. That makes Bobby a really scary threat. Another form of damage doubler is Grafted Exoskeleton. Giving Bobby infect will mean you only need to deal 10 damage to take a player out. If you combine that with a damage doubler, then you can kill an opponent with just 2 lands in hand. As a lot of lands will be going to our graveyard in this deck, we can use a card like Ruination Rioter to take advantage of that and throw around even more damage. And remember, you can also kill it with Bobby if you need to, to make sure it dies exactly on time. The other thing you can do with those lands is bring them all back to your hand, so that they can be chucked all over again. A special note here to Storm Cauldron, which lets every player play extra lands, but then whenever anyone taps a land for mana, they have to return it to their hand. This card is obscenely impressive, but is a great way to reload and keep the Lightning Bolt lands coming. Alternatively, you can try and bring all those lands back into play, with cards like Splendid Reclamation and World Shaper. If you combine these with some powerful landfall effects, like Rampaging Baloths or Omnath Locus of Rage, you will have a scary board state in an instant, which is a surefire way of winning the game. Rounding off the deck with some utility lands, we have a couple of very cool options. First up are our lands that tap for colourless mana. Command Beacon is a great way of recasting Bobby if the command attacks ever gets too pricey. Kessig Wolf Run is a solid way of boosting its power so you can get through for even more damage, and then Rogue Passage guarantees it actually gets through. Witch's Clinic, giving Bobby lifelink, is a great way of recouping some of our life total, as a 7-6 commander that flings death may be painting a bit of a target on our back. Then finally you can look at running some cycling lands, which helps synergize with our discard effects and helps smooth out our draws. The rest of your mana base will be very dependent on what you have available to you. We recently released a video with some advice on building a deck with a budget mana base, which might be of help. Until next time, please like, share and subscribe, and let us know down in the comments if there are any commanders you'd like to see a deck tech on. Thank you very much for watching.